We gotta start putting more autistic niggas on TV, man. It's not enough. There's a whole bunch of autistic white people. Tom Hanks, every single movie, didn't go. All we had was radio. That was the only time we were retarded on TV. Everything else, we either gotta be super de duper black or we're fucking crackheads. But there's no like, where's the weird niggas? Where's the autistic, neurodivergent motherfuckers? You know what I'm saying? That's why cops don't know how to deal with this because they don't know when we just being silly or weird. That's why they never kill like a, a tweaked out white boy. They see an SNL, they see the nigga pretend. There's not enough of us on screen being like weird. They see a nigga just dancing in the middle of the street like, what is that? Pow, pow, pow. But if you just let this nigga dance on fucking SNL, we, they might not have shot that nigga. This makes sense. <laughs> I'm just saying, cause we all grew up with that weird nigga. We always just pushed him away. Like I grew up with this kid named Cyrus. He had like cuckoo bugs. He wore the same pullover. He was musty as a motherfucker. He, he had a rolly backpack, but he never let it roll. He put it on his back. <laughs> and just walked around with the big ass stick all up. And kids would be mean. They'd run up behind him and start spinning the wheel. He'd be like, I don't like that. Don't spin them. <laughs> And he had all these, he had cargo shorts with all these pockets in them. He had hella pockets and he used to keep turtles in his pockets. I feel like y'all niggas didn't hear what I just said. There was a boy in my school walking around with turtles hanging out his pocket like the Joker in the back of a police car. I was like, what's up with y'all niggas? <laughs> and he was cocky about it. He wasn't even like, he was mean. He, he grew up with 50 Cent just like we grew up with 50 Cent. People try to make fun of Cyrus, but you got a turtle in your pocket. He's like, you know I got that. You know I always got that thing on me. <laughs> I had to find out why he had all these turtles. So I went up to him on Monday, and he just read right through me. He saw all the bullshit from the get-go. I was like, yo, Cyrus, I'm a turtle nigga. You're a turtle nigga. Let's be turtle niggas together. And he was like, name seven amphibians. <laughs> You got me, dog. You got me. <laughs> Next day it came around, I'm like, oh, we did a different tack. I'm gonna talk to that nigga like bitches. You gotta remember, he's autistic, so autistic people would be like real picky about what they like about the opposite sex. So I walked up, like, what you think of Makia, man? She's so bad. We should hang out and talk about how bad Makia is. He was just like, too much fat around her knees. <laughs> All right, I don't really know what I'm doing here. I don't know how to, I don't know how to break through with this nigga, man. <laughs> Wednesday, I just asked him straight up, you wanna hang out, wanna go play basketball? He's like, I would love that. We played basketball, this nigga kept his backpack on the whole time. I went to his house. He was a musty ass, smelly ass, goofy ass nigga, so I thought he was poor. Nope, he has a beautiful three-story house, beautiful mother, beautiful father, awesome older brother, cool younger sister. He's just the one weird nigga in that house. I go to his room, I thought I was gonna see an aquarium or some place where all these turtles are coming from. Nope, it's just a bed and a poster of Soldier Boy, just like my room. He sees me looking around, he's like, you wanna see where the turtles are coming from, huh? And I was like, yeah, show me where the turtles are. This nigga runs downstairs outside to his backyard, jumps over the fence. I like jump over the fence and it's this dirty backyard with a bunch of car parts and, and mannequin torsos. And I was like, cool, I'm about to get molested. Like, did you ever have that as a kid where you went somewhere like, yep, this the spot. This is the best spot to get molested at. This is all the stuff. It's creepy, it's dirty, yep. Dick in the booty time. <laughs> he runs and he knocks on the back door of his house and this old white Clint Eastwood looking nigga comes out and he's just like, yo, would you boys like to see some turtles? And Sam says, I would, I would love to see some turtles. I'm like, fuck, okay, let me just follow this nigga. We go inside, they're chatting, they're having this beautiful relationship of like the retarded young kid and the old man who lost all of his friends in war. And it was a beautiful relationship, that's why he didn't have any friends, because he has this Clint Eastwood looking motherfucker. We go downstairs, he turns on the light. This whole bottom basement is above ground pools full of baby turtles, all different colors. Cyrus is going like basket to basket, being like a Filipino woman in a farmer's market being like, no. <laughs> Too old. <laughs> this one's dead. <laughs> and I just realized there was a beautiful moment that Cyrus could never share with anyone his age because he's so whacked out that he can only share with this old man. Never spoke to him again after that day. Years went by. Beginning of the pandemic, I hit him up. I'm like, yo, what's going on with you, Cyrus? I thought he like grew up, became a whole different person. He goes, hey, dot, dot, dot. I'm like, he's going to tell me so much about his life and we're going to talk about the turtles. This would be great. And all he says is, do you write for that show Big Mouth? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, 
three out of ten. <laughs> and that nigga never said nothing back ever again. You got me, dog. <laughs> All right, you guys have a great night.